While the England football team have taken a brave stance against racism by taking a knee at the start of matches, Britain's political leaders had remained fairly silent. On Monday, Boris Johnson's spokesperson refused to condemn fans that booed players as they protested against racism. And Keir Starmer has said, as usual, nothing. That has now all changed. So six days after the initial incident, the Prime Minister's spokesperson said that Boris Johnson wants fans to cheer England's players on, not boo them. Now, a couple of hours after that story broke, The Guardian published an exclusive interview with Keir Starmer in which he accused the Prime Minister of failing to show leadership. Now, Starmer told the paper, The idea you boo the team is completely wrong. This is the response to what is an important collective decision by the team about their expression of their opposition to discrimination and racism. That's a decision they've taken, and I think they're right. All of us should support them, and all of us in a position to do so should show leadership, as Gareth Southgate has done, and have the courage to call it out and say it's the wrong thing to do. The Prime Minister was wrong when he refused to call it out. He didn't have the guts to call it out. He hedged his bets, and in doing so, he undermined the team on the verge of this competition. He didn't have the courage to side with the players. That is leadership. Compare and contrast him and Gareth Southgate on this. He didn't have the courage to stand by by the England team on the verge of this competition, and he's wrong about that, and that's a failure of leadership. Now, that's all very well. I agree with everything Keir Starmer has said there. The problem is it took him six days to say it. So if you're saying the Boris Johnson was didn't show a lack, didn't show leadership because he didn't condemn the people booing the England players, neither did Keir Starmer, right? Until six days later. Now, why did it take this long? It could have been that they were waiting for a focus group to deliver back their results, or it could have been that, like the rest of us, Keir Starmer's team were on Twitter on Thursday and saw that YouGov had actually done a poll on this and that their silence was very much out of step with the general public. So YouGov did a poll among fans across all of Europe, because obviously countries all across Europe who were entering Euro 2020, and they found overwhelming support for people taking the knee basically everywhere, most strongly in in Portugal, which I found somewhat surprising, um, but also very strong in England. Um, So in England, 54% of people support players taking the knee. Only 39% of people oppose it. That rockets um, to 78% of people when only asking ethnic minority Britons. Only 12% of ethnic minority Britons oppose taking the knee. Aaron, Starmer has finally come to the right position, but he sure has taken his time. Does he demonstrate the failure of leadership that he accuses Boris Johnson of? 100%. I mean, what he's saying about Gareth Southgate is embodying a certain kind of leadership I, I entirely endorse. I think it's absolutely true. I think what Gareth Southgate's done is show real moral courage, which is incredibly, you know, you, you see it so rarely in British public life. That it's kind of like, oh, wow, he's doing something not to be popular. Because often people will make these statements. So like, I stand with the LGBT community or, you know, Black Lives Matter. And then they become really unpopular. Uh, and then they go, oh, God, yeah, you're right. Or, you know, or uh, solidarity with the Palestinian people uh, under occupation. And they become unpopular. People criticize them. They might start losing jobs. They might start having, you know, have people who, who they respect say, that's wrong, actually. I don't agree with you on that. And they don't have moral courage. And so they say, oh, you know what? You're right. It's complicated. They might even take back what they initially said. Uh, and what Gareth Southgate said, actually double down, not a belligerent way. So, and he said, no, actually, I've thought about this. As a team, we've collectively decided this. This is what we're going to do. And that's leadership. And so Starmer's right to observe leadership and, and highlight the facts. But like you say, Michael, this is another classic example of, uh, of Keir Starmer ambulance chasing a, a political cause. You know, people call him Captain Hindsight, I think, for good reason. Um, and, and I think this is an example of that. And it has that double problem for him because, like you say, the leadership qualities, the moral courage, and I would not use those two words with Keir Starmer, by the way, moral courage, put them out of the window, they they really highlight his own deficiencies because those are the exact things he doesn't embody. You know, you might not agree with Brexit, and I don't think Boris Johnson agreed with it at one point, but the whole point of that political project that took the Tories to a major majority a couple of years ago was there's this thing, we're going to do it, we think it's the right thing because that's what people voted for. You know, and, and, and that's a politics, again, that Labour and Keir Starmer put themselves in opposition to. Or 
any any number of causes over the over the what eighteen months he's, since he's been the leader, more than a year, you would never associate him with moral courage. So, yeah, I think this is a uh, this is doubly bad for him. I think at this point, though, Michael. I mean, it's a bit of a tangent, but I think just Keir's kind of a bit of a joke, right? You know, I, I was watching like Arsenal fan TV on YouTube, and they're like taking the piss out of Keir Starmer. Mm. You know, that's really cut through. The guy's a bit of a joke. What I think people dislike about Keir Starmer is actually strange enough what he was pitching. It's just that his pitch has really not gone down very well. You know, I don't mm. really believe in very much. And I'm going to be a technocrat and I'm going to be professional and wear a suit. And people go, oh, wow, you're just a technocrat. You just wear a suit. You don't really believe in anything. And, and, and it's kind of like, for me, that's what's really interesting with Starmer is that people dislike him, not because they've not seen enough of him, not because they don't interpret him properly or because he's been misrepresented in the media. They identify precisely what he's trying to sell. And that's what they don't like. What really struck out this week was that YouGov have shown that Keir Starmer now has ratings which are, you know, just as bad as Jeremy Corbyn was at this same stage in his in his leadership. And now you can say, oh, well, why are you critiquing someone for being just as unpopular as the guy you supported? Mm -hmm. Well, Jeremy Corbyn was subject to a really big smear campaign. Keir Starmer hasn't been. And what's interesting, you know, you might say, oh, well, we're being biased because we're saying maybe he has been subject to a smear campaign and we're not recognizing it. Even Keir Starmer's stands don't say the media have misrepresented him you know no one is out there claiming oh the reason people don't like Keir Starmer is because he's been misrepresented he's clearly been correctly represented the media have reported Keir Starmer mm. as he is I mean it's because they don't find him threatening why would they bother to smear him but but they they, <laughs> they have reported him as he is yeah the public don't like him and he's panicking now because it's... because what what can you do if they're seeing the real you and they don't like it that's exactly it. I mean, it's unique, Mark. We're, we're looking here at a story in British public life, which the media are accurately, re accurately representing. It doesn't happen very often. It's happened with Keir Starmer. I mean, you know, I'll be honest, Michael, you know, and I think you and I were similar on this. We, want, we were open-minded about Keir Starmer. And I think the pitch that he had when he became leader, I'll be 80% of Corbyn's policies, but I'll be wearing a suit and lead into my credentials as a former director of public prosecutions. Actually, if you really mean that, I think that's a, that's a really great, Thing to aspire to as Labour leader. Obviously, he didn't. But I, I never thought he would be this, not even bad. I never thought the numbers would fall apart this quickly. Mm. You know, you look, for instance, amongst no, 18... I didn't. I definitely didn't. 18 to 24s, you've got, I think, Labour on 35. They're down like 20-something. You've got, like, the Greens second on, like, 24. I mean, people it's on Twitter today. And the Tories on 21. And, and people say, well, 18 to 24-year-olds don't vote. I mean, this is your base. Minorities, renters graduates, the young, public sector workers. We saw a poll recently, actually, about an astonishing number of nurses back uh, Boris Johnson, not particularly fond of Keir Starmer. You know, Labour are really looking at a real hiding at the next general election. Like, it's frightening. And I think we're going to get a glimpse of Batley and Spen. And what's different with Batley and Spen, and I will bring this back to the Southgate thing, what's different with Batley and Spen to, say, Hartlepool is, Hartlepool is super explicable in terms of long-term trends. Batley and Spen is really different. You know, yes, it was a marginal. Yes, it, you know, it has elements of people that want to leave the European Union and so on. It was a big far right there not long ago. I mean, obviously, the terrible events around Joe Cox um, demonstrate that. I think, I think the BNP or the National Front, you know, back in the day, big locally. But what they what they really show, I think, in Batley and Spen is the potential of Labour's vote, uh, the potential of Labour's vote to balkanise. Uh, and, and in Batley and Spen, you're, you're seeing that with Labour and George Galloway, right, potentially. So some Labour voters may be going over to the Tories. Some may be going to other parties for whatever reason. And then you've got George Galloway. And that's going to happen, I think, in lots of places. You know, Labour's problem now is losing voters both to your left and to your right, uh, which is something that Jeremy Corbyn in 2017, almost miraculously, actually, over, you know, he overcame. because it was the exact same challenge that was confronting in Miliband in 2015. So... Going back to the Gareth Southgate thing, you know, it just reeks of desperation like so many of these things. Just don't say anything here. You, you, you weren't on the story. Look, we're content creators in Navarra Media, Michael. You know, you don't talk about a story from three weeks ago on Siski Sauer, do you? People aren't interested anymore. If you wanted to show political leadership, if you wanted to influence the debate, Keir, you should have done it when you should have done it, which wasn't, you know, on Friday. You know, it was on Monday or it was last week. Uh, and it was a, it was a real open goal as well. By the way, you call you well if you want to call yourself an England football supporter, don't boo the team. Not hard. Uh -huh.